Hello, 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 everyone. It is your girl, Miss Natalie B. And you already know, y'all, it is after six o'clock. So it is Free Your Mind Friday with the Healing Academy. And of course, your girl, Miss Natalie B. And I am here for you. Today, we have a show, a very special show for you all. We are diving deep with one of our founders of the Healing Academy. For those of you who may not know, I am a founder of the Healing Academy non for profit education-based organization and, of course, arts-based organization. So first of all, if you're seeing this for the first time, if you're just now joining us at Free Your Mind Friday, go over and follow and like us everywhere. YouTube, where you can catch all the Free Your Mind Fridays and the Breathe Experience Tuesdays, as well as our Facebook page, The Healing Academy, and the Breathe Experience page, which is our shows at on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. So go follow and like on all of those. We are also on IG, which is Instagram, for those of you who are not with for snappers, okay? <laughs> and we are, we heal, heal, we underscore heal, underscore heal on IG. And we have our website up and running, so you guys can go check out and learn more about us on our website. And our website is also weheelheal.org because we are a non-for-profit organization trying to educate the youth as well as the adults and help us all get to a higher plane, okay? And speaking of higher planes, that is what we're talking about today, okay? So today we are talking about That was my drum roll. We are talking about a topic which is very important to us all. And if you count the title of the show, it will save the world. Emotional learning and literacy. Who y'all, emotional learning and emotional literacy is so necessary. And literally, I say this all the time, but literally you can pinpoint almost every problem there is with the world. <laughs> And point that thing definitely directed towards someone who is illiterate emotionally in some way, whether it's their own feelings or someone else's feelings. And that is this week's theme. Again, if you guys are new to the Healing Academy, each week is themed and then each day has a specific topic. And this week is all about emotional learning and literacy. And again, it will save the world, period. It's not like it might, it could save the world. It will. And it's one of the pillars of the Healing Academy because of that, right? And so we are not taught, just to get started, we are not taught emotional literacy in school, uh, at home even. We are just not taught emotional learning or emotional literacy. And I personally believe that it can save the world and it will save the world by doing just this. I'm going to give you my rationale and my breakdown on, for me, why emotional literacy is so important and emotional learning is so important. Okay. So say we take a child, because this is exactly what we plan on doing here at the Healing Academy. And when our school opens, it's exactly what we will be doing. We're going to take a baby, right? A child, a toddler. Let's say a toddler, okay? And you teach that toddler not only who they are, but you teach them the greatness from which they come from, right? You show them the car facts is what I like to call them. You give them the receipts, okay? These are all the amazing people who live just like you, right? And then you build that self-confidence. You tell them they're amazing. You show them they're th that they're amazing. And you show them exactly how to be amazing, right? You give them the skills, the techniques that they need to be amazing. And then once you do that, because that's not enough. That's a part of it. But that's not enough. You have to teach them how to manage their emotions, to understand their emotions, to not push down their emotions until they become a volcano and erupt on everyone around them. And I'm going to tell you why just showing a child how to be amazing and telling them they're amazing is not enough. 
because you can be some of the most accomplished people in the world, actors and scientists and doctors and lawyers. You can make all the money you want to make. You can live in the nice, big, fancy house and have the nice, fancy cars. But here's where emotional learning and emotional literacy comes into play. We see this all the time where you have celebrities that we may idolize or look up to or love their work and they're sad. They're sad. Some of them end up committing suicide. And we're like, but they had everything. They had the career. They had the success. They had everything. But they did not have emotional literacy or emotional learning. They didn't know how to check in with their emotions to the point where it became too much. So depression is real, y'all. All of these sadness is real. Just plain old regular sadness. All of these things are very real to, to celebrities, to everyday Joe Smoes, to your doctor, to your everyday people. We all experience all the spectrums of emotion. So it's very important that not only we reteach ourselves how to deal with our emotions and go through our emotions and to handle and deal with other people's emotions, but we teach our young people so that they grow up with the foundation of knowing how they feel, being able to articulate how they feel, and then not react off those emotions, but to think critically through those emotions. And today, y'all, I have a special guest joining me with Free Your Mind Friday. It is my sister. It is my other half, okay? I let y'all know, Miss Dion Victoria will be joining us and she has arrived. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring her up on screen so y'all can see her beautiful face and my niecey poo. <laughs> hey. Hey, hey, hey. There's that niecey poo. <laughs> and my Dion, my Dion as well. And that niecey poo. <laughs> <laughs> hey girl, hey. Hey, how you doing? I am good. I was just giving the people my rationale on why emotional learning and emotional literacy is so important and i broke it down into like celebrities and how they can have everything external but if they can't check in with their emotions we have things where like people we idolized and looked up to and thought they had it all and was happy ended up um committing suicide and different things like that and we see it um often or have drug addictions and all these different um things because they're looking for the external to fill the void of the emotional that they have to deal with and so just using that as one of so many examples on how all the problems of the world boils down to someone who didn't have emotional <laughs> maturity, for one, emotional literacy or emotional learning. Every slavery, I mean, every <laughs> problem that has ever been in the world boils down to someone not knowing how to deal with their emotions. OK, uh, and it's a problem we got to fix because that's how we're going to save the world, making sure everybody is emotional learners and emotional literate. OK, that's how we're going to save the world. Out here. <laughs> and like for in the case of so for me, I was thinking about this a lot, you know, we, like, OK, what do I talk about as an educator? Like, as you say, like our students and our young people learning they're being a social, socially emotionally aware. And for mm -hmm. us to be responsive to that and acceptant of that, like as an educator, anybody who gets into education and they think that they're just gonna teach, mm. quit right now, quit. It's right. not what you're for. <laughs> we, like, it's not that simple. Uh, <laughs> As an educator, okay. you are responsible. Like, how are you going to truly and fully educate anybody and be, you know, a part of anybody's liberation uh, if you haven't even acknowledged their humanity by acknowledging their emotional state and where <clears throat> they are in understanding that and <clears throat> their understanding of where their place is in society? It all plays a role and factor. And as educators, we have to, have to, have to first, you know, I'm always big on starting with ourselves. If you don't yourself and become socially, emotionally aware of your stuff. Come on, come on. Little to no chance of you truly and honestly understanding anyone and their emotional and their social awareness. So, um, I, I mean, we can get more into that. Um, Absolutely. But first, before we dive into that, you are my guest for today. So 
we're gonna do this like you're a guest, sis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are my guest, BB on Victoria. You can do you for tell? one, <laughs> right? <laughs> can you tell the people uh who you are, what you do, and why you do it? Hi, everybody. I am the Dion Victoria. I am an artist. I'm an educator. I'm a human being. I'm an entrepreneur. I am, I'm the universe, y'all, just like you. We're all a part of the universe. So I just, um, all that I do, I, ooh, the list. So my day job or the job that consumes most of my time is I am a middle school science teacher at art and, and motion and social um, and social in uh south shore <laughs> some of the social emotional right Come on. <laughs> right we and see so, what your mind did right it's in the right place though <laughs> <laughs> um i also am an artist so i have had a studio at the joe b art center over in bronzeville for the past five years or so um and uh, out of there before the pandemic i did things like sipping paints and exhibitions and things like that um i am also an entrepreneur i have partnered with miss natalie b on the healing academy and um it's, as y'all probably have heard is a nonprofit organization focused on transforming urban areas and places where people that like us um in order to help build, not build necessarily, but help people build themselves up, build themselves up. Um, and then the tools. What else? I'm a mother. Um, I'm really like settling into that role, obviously. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I'm learning to love it as much as I love my children. And what's up? <laughs> Yeah, this is a little princess, so she kind of tries to tell everybody what to do. This is Katie, Katie Alyssa Lay Milton. She is um, my little bit of calm. Katie Alyssa Lay Milton. Called that acronym. I just want to make sure you got it. Uh, <laughs> and she is probably one of the reasons why I've been able to really understand myself a lot better. Um, because she's been an absolute blessing. My children have been blessings. And so have my businesses, my partnerships, my friendships, relationships. All the ships really um, has helped me to develop myself and who I am. And who I am as a human outside of all those fancy titles I might have mentioned. As a human being, I, um, I've since, since birth been about evolution. That's something that I've always thought about since I was very small. Like, I remember waking up, my parents were still married. And I remember waking up in the bed trying to devise plans on how I was going to be a part of transforming and evolving the world. Mm. Um, so it's been, that's been something I was born to do. And therefore, I started with myself. When I was 19, I started, well, I actually started meditation in high school. I didn't realize that's what I was doing. I used to do a lot of yoga and like, uh, was it yoga? And what was this one that started with a P? I forgot what the other one, Pilates. You're actually leading into uh, one of my questions that I asked all of the guests on the show, which is when did you fall in love with whatever the subject matter is? And so you're leading into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop you and ask the question. Okay. Uh, <laughs> when did you fall in love with emotional learning or emotional learning? since the beginning of time? No, I'm just being no, when I was an atom out floating in <laughs> where you know, when the star exploded and it condensed the gases to the point where helium fused into sorry, hydrogen fused come into on, helium. come on, science teacher. And the rocks that was left after the sun was formed, and then Earth. And yeah, I okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, Leon loves science. For those who do not know, uh, so the moment I realized it, or when I'm looking back now, you know, in high school, I got really into yoga. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a contortionist. Weird fact. Um, so when I got into high school, I was like, oh, you can do these stretchy things and get more flexible. Cool. 
So I, I got that. And, um, but, you know, obviously it became something more than just about being flexible with the body. It's about being flexible with the mind as well. So, wow. right? So I um, really continued it, um, practicing yoga. And then when I got up to be about 19, I started practicing meditation, Rinzai Zen meditation. It's a Japanese style, very strict, very like, it's very masculine energy. Like, we're going to sit and meditate. <laughs> that was the energy I always felt there. Like, even when the women instructors would be in charge, I still felt like it was like this, mm, you better do what you're told, you know? And it's just, you know, you need your discipline and stuff. But after a certain amount of time, like at a, at a certain point, other people's discipline cannot be the reason why you meditate. So I kind of walked away from that style because I, I just felt like it needed to come from within. And it was very much so inspired by out, outside things. Um, not to mention a few of the people that I kind of looked up to got caught into some mess. And I was like, nah, like how you gonna be practicing meditation and being about liberation and evolution, but you messy. Practice what you preach. Come on, Come on here. Come on here. Come so, on here. Okay. <laughs> for obvious reasons and um, ended up uh, just kind of flowing, finding little pockets of people meditating throughout the city, um, but never really finding anything that stuck with me. Uh, I traveled to Korea and during that time heard about Vipassana meditation. And while I didn't do it there, I did do some meditation while there. I didn't practice Vipassana. I actually didn't start that until I came back to the States, mm -hmm. um, which I've been practicing something like that since um, 2014. Uh, and basically- so It's been a while since you've been honing self in. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And it just came from little Dion saying, hey, I wanna change the world. And yeah. let me find some ways to do that. When did you realize that emotional literacy or emotional maturity was a thing? Like, since it seems like you came here with, I, I'm going to need to do this to change the world and I'm going to find ways to help do that. When did it become a conscious thing for you to say, oh, this is this? Um, when I was 19, because it's okay. it, when I had realized my parents were human beings. Because mm. um, most That's of always us, a sobering moment. Yeah. You know, most of us, we look at our parents and we think they're superheroes and they can do no wrong. And, you know we kind of like put them on a pedestal. But mm -hmm. I went to a couple meditation retreats and came back a couple times and noticed how I felt and how I functioned. Because like immediately after the retreat, let me see. Yeah, Natalie, it's been a few years. So I don't know if you remember. I don't think we were that close the last time I went to a retreat. Um, I remember but, the last time you went to a retreat. The last time? Mm-hmm. I remember the last time you went to the Did you see me immediately after? I don't think it was immediate. So a lot of people, when you come back from a retreat and you see the person immediately after, you can tell they've changed. And they can tell you that they've changed by the way that they fit into the situation. Mm -hmm. So like when I would come back to these retreats and how I would fit into my family situation would feel different than how I felt while I was there meditating, if that makes sense. And so I realized, oh, that's because I have certain emotions around being in particular spaces and being around particular people. And it wasn't like emotions like, oh, I hate them per se, but it was more like, oh, even emotions of adoration, like looking up to people being like, oh my God, I see you as this person, but you're really just a human being having your own human experience. And that can entail a lot of different things. Mm, pause. I don't want you to brush past that. So it's like, please do not brush past that statement that you just stated. Okay. okay. Um, I think that is for real. Like, I feel like that is the foundation of baseline understanding of emotional literacy and emotional learning. Like that everybody is their own being living their own existence. It goes into the five agreements of don't take everything personally or don't make assumptions. It, 
we're all our own individual beings living our own lives. So everything that someone else is, is doing or has done does not have to be daggered directly towards you. They're just living their experience and we happen to be there. <laughs> and, you know, and I think that's the foundation of that emotional learning and maturity and literacy because it's like, oh, OK, that you you said this to me, but it really had nothing to do with me because you're your own thing and you dealing with your own stuff right now. So I'm going to just let you be in that moment dealing with your stuff mm -hmm. and taking that walk away or whatever that is. But realizing that it's not necessarily all about us. I feel like that's one huge step for emotional uh, literacy, learning and maturity. So I didn't want you to rush past that because that's a word. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel like that's step one. It brings you so much peace when you realize that what other people doing are doing, even if they are saying it's about you and they're directing it at you, it has mm -hmm. nothing to do with you, whether it's yeah. good, bad or ugly. When people be like, oh my yeah. God, I love you so much. They love you because they have some type of connection to something you've done that has absolutely nothing to do with you. You just, your actions may have inspired a particular emotion within them, but it's the emotion within them that makes them want to acknowledge the actions you did or not acknowledge it, right? Right. So like, for example, um, someone told me before I didn't make them happy. That's not my job. Absolutely not. That's step two. Oh God. We starting with the points early. <laughs> not your job. All right. Don't brush past that one either. Hold on. That's not your bag. Okay. Uh, so one is realizing that it's not always about you. It literally has nothing to do with you. Other people's reactions and choices because we all individual beings living our own individual existence. We just happen to be doing it in close proximity. Well, can okay. I add to that? Not, it does not have nothing to do with you what other people do, but it doesn't have anything to do with other people what you feel and what you think. And that has nothing mm. to do with you either. You have to be wow. like, okay, like for example, somebody says, I'm going to show up at this time. And time and time again, they don't show up at this time. It's a, it does not behoove you to have any types of emotions around that person not showing up at that particular time because it doesn't have nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. And your emotions have nothing to do with that person. Your emotions are about what you wanted and desired and, and couldn't get. You wanted them to show up at the time that they said they were going to show up. So what? <laughs> like, not to be cold, but at the same yeah. time, like, we got to stop putting it's all, it starts with the self, 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 self. And then it's like, projection. It's like, everything. Absolutely. Yeah. But you didn't hit the first two facts already, and we just get stuck. Uh, yes. People are their own being, and and the the second point that you just made, like how, because it goes both ways. How I feel has nothing to do with you, and how you feel has nothing to do with me. I can be kind enough to try to oblige or move some things around. And, and uh, people may think take that the wrong way. Like, no, you're supposed to try to do, 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 do. Yeah, you yeah, okay? Yeah, that sounds good. But in reality, you control you. And that person controls them. All we can do, especially when we are in situations where people may feel like in relationships, friendships, family situations, husband, wife, or, you know, whatever type of relationship you in, honey, because I don't just <laughs> get your life. Uh, whatever type of relationship is, we feel like we have to, what someone else does, we have to take personal or if they do something, it's a, a attack. No, no. That's how you get caught up in your feelings. That's not emotional. You're not, you're not learning. That's not emotional learning or literacy. That's how we get in our feelings and dive into that well where we start pushing things down or projecting and throwing things at other people. We have to take responsibility for our own emotions. And step one of being able to do that is realize I'm my own being, you your own being, you on your own path, I'm on my own path. Even if you're in a relationship with somebody else or friendship or family relationship, we're just choosing to do that together. But we're still two different beings on our individual paths. So I got to take responsibility for my stuff and you got to take responsibility for your stuff. And when somebody like Dion, you gave the example of 
if somebody if don't show up on time, most people would be hated. Like, you know, never show you disrespect my time. You do, 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 do. Right. but you got control of how you feel. You can't right. make that person show up on time. But you so that has nothing to do with you. Yep. It's not disrespecting you. It's not none of that. That's that person. You don't know what they've been through. They probably ran into traffic and they got kids and the kids was there and they want to get. We don't know. We don't know. We just know they late. Exactly. And so all we can do at that moment is determine if this person is always late. And that's something that's a deal breaker for you then you can determine how you choose to interact with that person. You can keep being mad that they show up late or you can accept the fact that they're going to be late and plan things accordingly that way. Or you can be like, I just don't want to be around you because you're going to always be late. Your Man, choice. That's how like <laughs> to plan for them to be late. It's, it's, it's sticky too. Cause I've tried to do that and they ended up being on time. <laughs> and we don't know. Cause they, they own being on their own. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know what? You're just going to go with the flow on this forever. Right. So, I mean, you just have to de decide how you're going to deal with certain people. So, I said earlier, like, that's not that's not your bag. So, that's the saying we have. And then a lot of things are not your bag. Mm -hmm. People's trauma is not your bag. We can be kind enough if we want to be an ear to help to, you know, lend some advice. But that's not our bag. And that's when you have to say, you know what? I'm going to walk away from this. Like, and not necessarily walk away, like never come back or turn your back on someone, but just being like, I have to create boundaries for this because for your sanity, for exactly for your sanity, for your social, emotional comfort and, and growth and development, it doesn't behoove you to deal with people who are not acknowledging their stuff. And the same for you. Social emotional maturity and learning is you realizing your ish as well as you realizing other people ish. Like Dion said at the beginning, start with self. So if you see some some traumatic things that's affecting your life and somebody else where you have to create boundaries, take a look at yourself too and say, hey, what's some stuff that I may be putting out that other people really don't have to deal with? Because a lot of times people get mad when people step out of their life or something like that. That ain't your behead. If they leave, whatever reason they love for is all of their own. <laughs> A lot of times I shout when people leave because they were supposed to. Okay. And, and okay. Anyone who walks out of my life does so for the betterment of everyone. That's one of my minds. Come on. Everyone about themselves, me, the future, every, everything everybody. and everyone. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies, everybody. They and we can't get attached. We can't we can't get emotionally attached to things that are fleeting. Um so yes, yeah, so if it's not your bag, don't try to hold it. Leave that bag where you found it at. So if you're the one putting out some stuff, take some time within yourself to figure out what that is you're putting out and how you can address it because you can't expect people to put up with your mess. Just like other people can't expect other people to put up with their mess. Right. We we can't expect that. We can't make these assumptions. Again, going back to the five agreements. <laughs> Bless us. Bless us. <laughs> I saw the prep. <laughs> yeah. like, no. oh. We're good. <laughs> yes, but we, I mean, we have to, to make that commitment. And it's a commitment. We're not saying these things. I don't want to speak for you, Dion, but I don't think we're saying these things like they're easy. These are things that we're currently still working through. The thing about social emotional literacy or learning is you're consistently learning about yourself, about other people, about life, about interactions. It's not, oh, one and done. I'm going to read a book and magically know how to deal with my emotions forever and other people's too. No. No, no, nope. no, that's <laughs> not a thing. <laughs> no, it's going to be an ongoing process, too, especially when you're dealing with a lot of trauma. Um, you're going to have to dive deep and you're going to have to, to look at yourself first. And while you're looking at yourself, it's going to help you figure out how to interact with the world around you and other people around you as well. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. So she can get tell you with your journey, but I just had to pull them points out because the people needed to hear. Okay. Well, I don't even know where, where did I leave off. What were we talking you about? You learning of, uh, that your parents were human, and when you came back from that retreat, um, you hit different. Yeah, this life was different. It was you see things. The colors colors look different, mm. and it was just like just coming to realize that 
the world isn't exactly what we thought it was. I, like, that's why it's so important to teach kids at a young age about social emotional learning, about checking in with self, about being aware, because Otherwise, they develop these unreal perspectives of the world that are extremely mm. askew. Because not only do they develop an idea of what the world is that is not true, but they mm -hmm. also it, they develop it in a way that it becomes natural to them, or it becomes mm. like the norm for like people to not really check in with themselves and people yes, to God. not be aware of who they are and what they are. Like that becomes the norm, and so. They don't necessarily see a reason to explore the self. Or a problem with their actions. Or any problems with their actions. And so as educators, as an educator, it's really important for me to not only be aware of my students' social emotional awareness and understanding and just like checking in where they are, but it's also important for me to model how do I deal with my social emotional stuff when I'm having a bad day. I tell my students, hey, y'all, having a bad day. I'm not all that happy. Like, I'm going to be honest, I might confuse them because I'm, all, I'm probably 95% of the time sound happy. Maybe about mm, of that 95%, 10 to 15, maybe 30%, somewhere between 15 and 30%. I'm okay. I'm not all that happy. I'm just okay. I'm not bad. I don't feel bad. I'm just like, eh. But if you came into my class, you'd think I was like the most cheerful. Like, ah, oh, me too. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to class. Today is Monday. Yes, I do that. Today is Monday all day long. You yes. sing the Miss Monica with the kids? <laughs> with middle schoolers? That's hilarious. Yes. They be like, it's too early, Miss Milton. I'm like, it's it's not that early to me. I've been up since four. They gonna remember you forever. <laughs> they gonna be like, yo, you remember that teacher? <laughs> <laughs> be a memorable teacher for good reasons. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's what I want them to be like. Oh yeah, I remember Miss Milton used to let us talk about our feelings and like, you know, we she'd ask us our opinions on things because I legit be like, what would y'all do in this situation? I'd be asking them about my, like these kids got knowledge. I'd be like, yo, I got a problem. <laughs> and that's the thing too a lot of young people uh feel like they don't have a voice and when i was teaching my teens that was one the whole premise of the program that i was teaching was to let them know that they have a voice and a large percentage of the beginning of the program was getting them to speak up and say how they feel and what's on their mind because it's that kids are seen and not heard it's that i'm an adult so i know better sit down and shut up mentality that makes these beautiful minds feel muted and to the like you said the things that shouldn't be seen as normal becomes normal to them so being mute and shut down and not listened to becomes a normality for these children to the point that when they become adults and they're supposed to engage in conversation, they're supposed to put their feelings and their thoughts out there. They're supposed to communicate in relationships on how they feel or what's wrong with them. They can't do it because we've muted them for so long and then expected them to just magically know how to do these things when they come of a certain age, like it's a switch that turns on. Girl, I swear. <laughs> like somebody, I be like, have you ever done this before? No. Has anybody ever taught you? No. Okay, you can't expect kids to know some of this stuff. It's not we, what, a lot of it. We teach them. Osmosis. We have to teach them. <laughs> they're supposed to know it through osmosis. Like, where do they learn the information? They like, eat they just <laughs> absorbing it through the air. <laughs> and I think that's the thing. Like, we don't think about these young people going back to how you looked at your parents as an adult, um, as a person, as a human being. And you're like, oh, you, your own person and your own existence. We have to look at these children that way. They're not just attachments of us. They're not just, they are their own person. These young people are their own beings on their own path of existence. We don't know everything about these kids. If we birthed them or not, we are not them. They're their own beings. Yep. And so we have to remember and look at our children as they're their own beings. And one day they're going to be beyond us, outside of our reach, as far as living on their own and doing their own things. And we have to make sure as educators, as aunties and uncles, as parents, as grandparents, as random people walking down the street, that we are <laughs> the village. 
that we are instilling them with the things that they're going to need once they are out of our reach. Once they are out on their own, that they are going to know how to do these things. We have to stop looking at our children as just like little playthings or attachments to us. They're their own beings. Oh, and yeah. we're not, again, how I started the show, we're not taught social, emotional learning. It, not at home, not at school. So how in the world are we expecting to raise a, a, a world that's better than the one we have now? Right. Because as, as again... All of the problems in the world can track back to someone who is emotionally stunted or emotionally illiterate. And they didn't know how to deal with their emotions, so they started a war. Or they didn't know how to deal with their emotions, so they stole people. They didn't know how to deal with their emotions, so they burned some stuff. Right. Like it's, it's all tracking back to somebody that didn't know how to deal with their emotions. And that's the world we live in right now. And if you see a problem with the world we live in right now, what are you going to do to change it? The simplest thing you can do is pour into a young person and make sure that they know more than you as you work on yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's emotionally and otherwise. On yourself. Let's emphasize as you work on yourself. Don't be pouring into these kids and you ain't working on yourself. Please. If you're broken, stay away from these kids. I mean it. Like, don't let me find out that you're a <laughs> human being and you out here trying to mentor kids. I'm tricking. I'm talking to my ancestors and I'm going to let them know they need to talk to your ancestors. So Come that they can <laughs> Right. Because either you need to start working on yourself, you need to get away from these kids. And saying, that's so true. People get in their hands on kids and then the kids all messed up. No, get out of here. We over that. We passed that. We don't do that here. That's above us now. Girl. And, and the truth is, a lot of it uh, is the parents, honestly. There are some mentor people out here that be on some other stuff. You want to see your niece? Oh, yes. <laughs> Sus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Katie! I don't even know. I guess Mason must have left the cap off. Oh, Katie! Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> so for obvious reasons, I, I gotta get a towel or something, girl. Yes, go ahead, handle it. I'll be here talking. You just hop back in. <laughs> As I say, parents, we had to take a parenting break. Oh, man. But for reasons like this, kids and young beings, I'm not even going to call them kids or babies, young beings, come hear who they are already a lot of the time. How we educate them and the information we pour into them just helps guide them and prepare them more so for their purpose and for the things that they have to do and interact with in this life. Right. They come here with a wheel. They come here inquisitive. They come here wanting knowledge. And what we show them by our behavior, this is why it's so important that we check ourselves emotionally and figure out how to manage and deal with our emotions and communicate how we feel and don't bottle things up because our children are looking at us, even if they're not our children. If you're a mentor, if you're a teacher, if you're an auntie or an uncle, again, grandparent, whomever you are, they look to us at how to do everything, how to speak, how to eat, how to walk, how to talk, how to handle our emotions. So if we're flying off the handle and cussing people out, what do we think these young people are going to think is normal? Oh, that's how we interact. When we feel a certain way, we explode on people. Oh, okay, that's the norm. And that action becomes the norm. And then you have an adult doing the exact same thing. And we're wondering why, right? So it's super important to work on yourself, especially when you have young people looking at you. It's, it's important that we work on ourselves, period. But it's super important when we have young eyes looking at us because what we show them and what we tell them and what we teach them becomes their normal. 
similar to what Dion said earlier, when we have our parents or our people in our lives that's older than us, like even older cousins and stuff like that, we look at them almost as gods. They're like, man, you so cool. Or you so this or you so that. It's important that we make sure that our young people are seeing positive examples because, again, they are the future. So if we are teaching ourselves, and practicing ourselves and showing and teaching them emotional learning or emotional literacy, then that is how we literally change and save the world because we're creating a future of young people who are critically thinking, who are analyzing how they feel, who know how to talk and break down their feelings and their emotions. They know how to not get attached to the wrong people, which can lead to further trauma. They know how to deal with their self and with others emotionally that's the type of world i want to live in where katie can articulate how she feels when she feels that way and not do some passive aggressive stuff that leads to some more stuff that leads to some more stuff that blow up into some more stuff um, can we leave the passive aggressiveness in 2020 please 2020 was a pretty passive aggressive year okay can we leave it there <laughs> like Please don't like let it go. We about to be in a whole nother year. Don't bring none of that BS to 2021 and beyond because it had already been an energy shift, y'all. This is what I really want people to know. The energy shift has already happened. Y'all into astrology and the ethos, y'all should already know. The energy shift has already happened. Dion, like astrology, you say. Like, <laughs> I'm going to tag you in. So it's one second. <laughs> Y'all should already know the energy shift has already happened. The planet alignments that already happened. We are in a wave of good. So much greatness is about to come forth. If y'all just leave the negativity, the passive aggressiveness, the emotional illiteracy in the past. If we leave all of that alone, these next hundreds and hundreds of years is going to flourish. We all going to win. If we leave that in the past, that's why emotional literacy is so important because we've all, the energy is already set up for us to win. We just got to do the work we need to do to continue the winning, okay? And that's for ourselves and for these babies because it ain't they fault when they messed up. And we see these grown elders jacked and we like, Damn. it ain't that elder's fault. At some point, it becomes your responsibility. I'm right. wrong. At some point... Right. Your learning is your responsibility. But man, what did they have to go through? What did they family teach them? What did life and society teach them about how to deal with their emotions? Right. You know, sometimes people come like I'm of a firm belief of the uh, being reborn and stuff. And some of these people come into the world with some messed up tendencies and they don't got nothing to do with their family. Like, yeah. like, for example, kids being raised in the same household, but they come out different. Yeah, that's something to do with the kid and to a certain extent how the kid responds to the situations, which is different depending on the kid. Mm -hmm. so, and that's, that's the thing too. They're like, own like who they are inside. That doesn't have anything mm -hmm. to do with what's going on in the world around them. So, cause we do definitely come here who we are. Yeah. And that's also realizing that our children are their own individual beings and they're not attached to us. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I said that actually when you walked away with Katie, because I was like, and these babies come here with their own agendas, you know? <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And they're so different. And I've seen it firsthand because there's four of us. There's four of us in my household. Yeah. Same mama, same daddy, same upbringing, same house. <laughs> same floor of the house. Like, we, we were right there together. And, and the personalities are completely different the um emotional maturity level is completely different and so these are things that we have to look at as well and that also as being the educators or the parents we have to realize too that we can't teach all of our kids the same way mm -hmm. and that's a word too we can't teach diverse learn we can't teach emotional literacy or regular literacy or math or science or anything else as a blanket we got to reach these babies where they at and if it's doing what dion do starting by checking in all right where are y'all emotionally how y'all feeling what's going on before i teach you about 
quantum physics or whatever right. we learn. I might not even be able to receive that. Today, my class could not receive it. I was like, it's the end of the day. It's Friday. It's nice outside. Like, it was too many things going on. I know these kids was looking out the window. I was looking out the window. So <laughs> that sunshine, I think. <laughs> right? So I got to be aware of where my students are. And it doesn't make any sense for me to get frustrated as an educator. It doesn't make sense for them to get frustrated as students when the reality of where we are in the seasons of our uh, world. Talk about astrology. I'm sorry. We taught you mentioned it. So let's get there. Oh, yeah. Take uh, you in, sis. <laughs> Thanks. So <laughs> ta let's talk about that a little bit. So there are a set of stars in the sky right now. The earth rotates and we experience different stars depending on the earth's rotation as well as where the earth is located in, in, in its process of rotating around the, the, the sun. So do you agree, yay or nay, do we get energy from the sun, yes or no? Absolutely, yes. It, yay or nay is the sun a star absolutely yes so if we're born under particular stars in the sky there's going to be particular energy that we experience at the time of passing into this plane of existence <laughs> it's just the way it is you just spoke that word and i hope i hope y'all rewind this once we pull, pull it back and play it on youtube and put it on facebook page because y'all need to hear that again Boy, that ain't make all the sense in the world and just broke down anybody who ever thought that astrology was a fool. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. So knowing that, you're going to have a particular set of energy as the earth continues to do its cycles, you're going to have certain cycles. There's going to be certain times of the year where you're more productive. There's going to be on. certain times of the year where you're not so productive or maybe your emotions are a little, a little harder to manage. There's just going to be certain times of the year. The moon. Think about this. When we have full moons, when the moon comes up and gets closer to us because of its rotation or appears to be closer to us, the tides rise. The, the earth is responding to the moon. The human body is 70% water. So if the water is shifted by where the moon is located around the earth, why not with the water in your body be affected by the moon? Emotions and experiences that we have to acknowledge. Come on. You <laughs> speak a <laughs> high facts, huh? Yo, I got <laughs> tears in my eyes. You speak a high facts. <laughs> Y'all need this work. Get this work. Go so ahead, I'm sorry. attention to these things because it will help you understand your social emotional uh, learning. I know like some people are like, I don't need to know that stuff. That's not, that's weird. Um, why are we talking about because this? Because it wasn't processed as their norm from their childhood. So now it's strange or different. And that's the only reason why, I mean, that's the only reason why they can say, oh, Leos are like this and Sagittarius are like that. And but there's other factors. That's just the mm -hmm. thing. Just be like the start. That every, most everybody subscribed to, but they don't want to go deeper though. We you have to deeper, you consider <laughs> the other bodies. We only talk about the stars. Let's. What about the planets? They have a gravitational pull. Therefore, they're going to affect us. Whether everything has a gravitational pull, therefore everything is always tugging on everything else. That's just mm -hmm. the. So for us to be sitting here saying we're not affected by Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system, second in size only to the sun. Come on. Come on. Jupiter affects us and we can't pretend Huge like gravitational pool. <laughs> Yo, you speaking high facts. So we're going to have to do a whole like one on one course with you because you speaking <laughs> just like them, you just dropped hot facts. Like. <laughs> And then you broke it down so easily, like that. And they didn't know where you were going since so they didn't know they wasn't ready. Like even the skeptics was like, "Oh yeah, star, sun, absolutely, energy, yeah, okay." Where you all oh, like you just pieced them up with the facts. They wasn't even ready. They couldn't even negate it. You hit it down with the girl. You just did that. And then even with the water and the and our body made up. 
I just want to know eventually, do I get to share a poem or something? I'm sorry, I had to take my mic off the stand to drop mic for you. <laughs> Sus, you just killed that. Like, I hope y'all rewind this. I hope y'all rewind this and get that work and then take notes and write it down. Because, But it makes so much sense. That's why I'm going so crazy right now. <laughs> I know I'm probably being mad extra, but it just makes so it's when you much. have like epiphany moment. I know what you're feeling. It's Thanks. like, duh. <laughs> right. And that's why like the way you broke it down, like, uh-huh, uh-huh, check box. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> Peace. I hope it peace y'all up. I hope y'all get this knowledge. And it makes so much sense. And it all ties into what avenues can we use outside of the bases that we know to make sure that we are fully being our best selves in alignment with our purpose and our path and social, emotional learning and literacy. All of that, I feel like, goes into social, social, emotional learning. The different ways we can look at social, emotional learning. It's not just, okay, take deep breaths. That's one. Absolutely. Absolutely. You best breathe. Okay. <laughs> Taking deep breaths and save some lives out here. <laughs> Hunting. Come on here. Taking deep breaths definitely didn't save lives out here. That's fact. I ain't got to been there to know that. All right. That's fact. But then outside of that, if I'm an Aries and I was born under these stars, right, or this moon or this whatever, how does that affect me? What are my triggers? Because learning your triggers is a huge part of social emotional learning. There's a website. And then how to work around them. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, there's a website okay. called, uh, there's two websites I can tell y'all about. Oh, well, one, because the other one I'll have to get for y'all later because I can't remember the name of it. But the first one, Astro Cafe, and ST, it's called A S T R A L Cafe, C A F E. Dot com and that website actually helps you to do like a uh, what's it called a, um not a numerology it also you can do your numerology charts on there as well but you can get your complete natal chart that's what it's called mm. it talks mm. about the stars you were born under as well as some other things because it's again it's not just the stars it's the other bodies in our solar system as well everything is always tugging on everything else so where Jupiter was located when you were born, where all the other planets were located when you were born, where's the major asteroids, where are these things, where are they? Because they're pulling on you in the same way that you are pulling on them. It's just not mm. the same. Think of it like this. <clears throat> Our gravitational pull is not as strong as the Earth because we're just not as big. Right. That's why the Earth is so banging she can pull the moon like come on over here sus come on over here rotate around me like a hula hoop or whatever then <laughs> the sun's like but i'm the biggest i'm the sun so y'all rotate around me i'm gonna rotate around <laughs> me <laughs> i'm gonna sit in the middle i'm a star that's another thing like th these bodies are different the outer planets are gaseous so they're not actually anything we can land on, mm. you know? So they have a different energy and where they are located over our heads is gonna affect the energy that we come to this planet with. Come on, you spitting high facts today, so. so Oh, I know you having a good time talking about this science. Oh, is this it. Is sitting well with your soul? Okay. I know, you know, you can, <laughs> a little better. Come on, you healing yourself, <laughs> getting that love energy. Come on, science, heal it, heal it. Girl, okay. you know it. Uh, but I think this is so dope. I think it's so dope because it's a different way to look at social emotional learning, and and it's so dope because once you know, and you look at yours, you can now look at a different way to educate your children, and you know how to maneuver around your children as well mm. so say if you know just like if now some people know the term retrograde just like if you know a retrograde coming up you like all right i ain't no. even be mad my phone's retrograde. gonna be stupid my computer's gonna be dumb <laughs> Man, you was there you was there when my when i had the retrograde 
I didn't even get mad. My computer wouldn't charge. My phone charger in my car stopped working. I, like something happened with my keys. It was just like a lot. And I didn't even get mad about it, to be quite frank. Because it was just like, what you going to do? What am I going to do? You Mer can prepare yourself for it when you know it's coming. Mercury is in retrograde. That's a whole nother planet. There's nothing I can do about that. Absolutely. Like, what you gonna go build a spaceship, go up in space and be like, hey, let me figure out hey, how to get Mercury. Mercury together. I'm gonna need you to <laughs> get together. Sunday, I'm gonna figure out Mercury. I gotta charge okay. my laptop for work, okay? Get it together, Mercury. We we can't do that. But see, that's the thing about getting like your natal chart and looking at your numbers and different things like that. And then not only yours, again, starting with stuff, your but then your children's. Yeah. Because if you're a parent, you can parent different when you know what's coming. Yeah. Like if you know retrograde is coming, why are you going to get mad because your computer ain't working and your phone ain't charging the doodle? If you know your kid's about to go through some stuff, let me go and put some things in place. Let me go and get my chakras together because it's going to be one. Like, get yourself together. And that can help with your emotional literacy. <laughs> hey, Taylor. Hey, hey, y'all. We see you. We appreciate you being here. Man, but literally, this is how we're going to save the world. We are going to do it by creating a type of world we want to live in where people are kind to themselves and to each other. Yes, Katie. Come on, girl. Let the people know. Let the people know, Katie. We're going to save the world. We're starting with you. Well, we're going to start with ourselves. And then we're going to pass it down to you. Okay? <laughs> and all the other little children of the world. We have to. Yes, she is your little <laughs> precious little baby. She is. <laughs> but this is this is why social emotional learning and literacy is so important, y'all. And if y'all miss these facts, Dion Victoria has been dropping. Please, it's gonna be up on the page. Y'all take that thing back, rewind, and replay because the the astrology facts my sister just dropped blew my mind, and I knew these things already. <laughs> That's the thing; like I already know, and it still blew my mind. So if y'all are not aware of how astrology affects your social emotional physical being. Y'all rewind this. Y'all need to come back. It's going to be on YouTube. It's going to be on the Facebook. Listen to Sus because she she blew my mind. And I already know. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> but, man, we appreciate y'all for being here. I want to I wanna start bringing it around to a close. Um, and I, I typically do that by asking a closing question. And that is, what is five points or notes that you can leave with the audience on how to be more uh, social, emotional uh, learners or literate? Well, you know what I'm going to start with? The self. <laughs> so, <laughs> make sure you have a routine for how you check in with yourself, whether it's as simple as when I get up in the morning, I look in the mirror and I ask myself how I'm doing. How are you today? and be honest about it, right? Or if it's more in depth by journaling daily, or you have a whole meditation session that you do every so often, you know, whatever your routine is, start to develop it, create it, make sure it works for you so that you can constantly be aware and be checking in with the self. Um, and in that process, kind of going with that is, practice and build on your awareness because once you are aware of the self it's a lot easier to be aware of what other people are doing and experiencing and how you can be you know a, a strong component of you know understanding other people's social emotional spaces and awareness so start with the self so that it'll help you understand others around you Make sure that you are passing on any tools that you develop to your children, to your students, to any young people, and even to those who are your peers, friends, the, the close circles you have. I wouldn't say, I know when I first started meditating, I was probably like a, a lot of the devout Christians where I was like, you need meditation in your life. Meditation will save you. You know, talk about Jesus. Um, <laughs> And that's how it was at first. But then after, you know, meditating for a while, it's like, that's none of my business. Like they need to figure it out for themselves. If they 
if they see the value in me as a human and they see what meditation has done for me and how I've shifted over the years, then they'll try it. And if they don't, then they won't. Or maybe something else will inspire them. That's not my bag. Mm -hmm. Acknowledging what is ours to carry and what's not. So the first one was checking in with self, making sure you have a routine for how you do that. And then the next is passing on what you know to those who <clears throat> are coming behind you or, <clears throat> or are around you. And then the next is acknowledging what you can and cannot control about that. You know, mm. a lot of the times our emotions are based on things that we can't control and we carry it like it's ours. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, Absolutely. I can't do nothing about Mar Mercury's being in retrograde. I can't do nothing about, about Mercury. <laughs> and, and you should feel the same way when somebody doesn't do something you want them to do, it should be the same feeling. They are in outer space to you because there's nothing you can do about the choices people make. I had a conversation with my students. Today. Their own being, just like you're your own being. Exactly. I had a conversation with my students today because we're getting ready to go back into the building. And they're like, well, you know, in the school, it'll be easier because, you know, the teachers make us do the work. I'm like, y'all always have the choice to do the work. For whatever the reason, yours. Yours. because we're in the same room, you have to do it. But honestly, you had you always had the choice on whether you were going to do it or not. The building just gives you this false illusion of you having to do it because you're in the building. You have to do it, period. The will is within yourself. It comes from you that it gets done. I was like, I don't give you all the grades. I said, if I could, I'd give you all A's. But I can't because you don't do the work. So <laughs> I can only give you what you do. Like I can't. Make Accountability is a thing that comes with emotional learning that we need to teach our children. We're not teaching our children accountability and that there's act, there's consequences to your actions. I tell my two-year-old when he goes to the corner, I say, now, why did you go to the corner? Because you chose that. You had other options. But <laughs> what decision did you choose that ended you up in the corner? Right. You did that. And and we have to reframe the word consequence because <laughs> students think that people think that consequence is a negative thing. It's good and bad. It's just whatever happens to the I, I, I tell them all the time, a gravitational pull. What you put out is what comes back. Mm. So what comes towards you is the energy and flow of what you put out. It bounces off and comes towards you. So if you want good consequences, do good things. That's it. Mm -hmm. Do the things that it takes to get the things that you want. And it will come. And if, if only we taught that to ourselves and our children and the people around us. Imagine how, again, to bring it to the world and the global aspect, how different the world would be if everyone just put out what they wanted to receive. Come on. If you want to receive love, then you need to put out love. Treat so we had everybody on this planet walking around putting out love because they wanted to receive love. Then one, they would receive love. Because other people are putting out love and they're getting back what they put out, right? If you want to receive kindness and you putting out kindness and then kindness comes back because everybody putting out kindness because everybody want to receive kindness. Girl, a beautiful thing. And then you said too, gravitational pull. <laughs> so as a planet of Earth, if every being on this planet was putting out love and kindness, imagine what we would be pulling as a collective on this planet. All good things, all positive things. That's the goal. That's the goal. All right, sis. I got three. Nope. Yep, three points. You got two more. Hold on. We said self, <laughs> share the knowledge. Mm hmm What did I miss? Self, share the knowledge. What was the other one? And then acknowledging what is ours to carry and what is not. Okay. So I had a whole thing. <laughs> Acknowledging what is ours. Teach the kids. Mm -hmm. Teach what you learn. Um, I think uh, do some research. Mm. Research everything about emotions, about uh, if you're a science person. And then, like you always say, that like research the part that interests you. Like, mm -hmm. I like science, so I've been looking up the the chemical. Like, why do we have emotions? Like, what is the chemical process that makes emotions a thing? You know, what is the chemical process when we experience fear and we go into fight or flight mode or all those things? If that's something that interests you, research it. 
if you're more interested in the the social aspect, like how do people function? Like how does being socially aware and being socially engaged affect your social, emotional understanding and learning? If you like food, look at how food affects your Come emotions. On. It definitely does, but we all know that. Find out interest and figure out how are your emotions affected by one of your interests. If you like food and you eat junk food all the time, consider that. Like, how does that affect your emotions? I know when I have like really bad food, I get sad. Because it has sad. adverse effects on our bodies. We taste it and we, and we, we taste it and the dopamine is released in our brain from whatever memories are associated with the food. And then, our, but our bodies are actually like, this is trash and responds that way. Right. <laughs> So you think you're doing yourself good. Because the dopamine, but it's like drugs, girl. Junk food is drugs. I don't care what nobody... You know, sugar is, I believe, classified oh, as a drug. A sad note. I know we're going on a sad note of the sad notes. But mm -hmm. sugar, y'all, sugar is more addictive than crack cocaine. It's literally classified as a drug. Legally. Like, but seriously. It's been wars fought over sugar. Sugar. Try to go without yeah. sugar. Watch what happens to you. You lose it. Like cold turkey. No also, food. because they put sugar in everything. Even stuff that sugar probably shouldn't be in or sugar doesn't need to be in your crackers. Is Why is the sugar in my crackers? Sugar is everywhere. Because they know it's a drug. They got to keep you coming back for the for the good good. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> Research. And then also the coffee, y'all need to be mindful because people be literally going through coffee withdrawal yeah. and they think it's funny. And like subconsciously you laugh, but then when you really think about it, you're like, that's just sad. Like, have you ever seen a coffee drinker be like, man, I ain't had my coffee today. I can't think right. My senses is not coming out right. Whoa, that's a problem. <laughs> I can't. I had I like I crave coffee like once a week, maybe. It's people that have like three cups or more a day. I did that like when I was in college and I used to get so sick. I was like, oh no, coffee not the thing. Coffee is not the thing. I started taking uh, vitamin B. If y'all need energy, vitamin B. Sea mm. moss mm. is also a, a good energy booster. You know, uh, that's that again is doing that research, thinking about, okay, what does this bad thing do for me that's negatively affecting my body? And what's some good things that I can put in that will do the same thing that will actually help me feel better uh, health-wise and emotionally? Uh, because again, what we don't know is that a lot of the things we eat and drink directly affects our emotions. Mm -hmm. And I would say my last thing would be truly monitor the things you consume. Um, Watch yep. what you eat. Yes. From food, yeah. <laughs> all, all of your senses. Watch what you eat in all of your senses. Because I say that because all of these things affect our bodies and therefore affect our minds. Because the brain will release particular chemicals based on what our body has in its system. And there, and that, when those chemicals are released, that is when we feel the particular emotions that we have throughout the day. Mm. So just be mindful of what you consume, whether you're watching TV. If you're watching something and it's, it keeps scaring you, the chemicals that are released for fear are being released in your system, whether you're actually afraid, whether there's something to actually be afraid of or not. Mm. Your body doesn't know the difference. It doesn't. It just knows I'm scared. And your heart, your adrenaline, rush, all of that because of a movie. Now, that's a good movie. That means the director did their job. They did their thing. Come on, come on. But if you're not interested in having that adrenaline rush, don't watch that movie. Or sing things that makes you like overly sad or depressed. Or well, you know, I don't listen to certain songs when I'm in a particular mood. Yeah. But, and not even just in a particular mood. Like I'm not listening to a song about cheaters and stuff and a girl glorifying being a cheater. I don't listen to those songs. 
I purposely like I may like certain songs based on the beat and the melody, but I purposely will like negate or skip over certain songs because I just don't want that energy. And people always think I'm crazy when I'm like, I don't do scary movies. And it's not because I'm scared of them. I just don't want to introduce that into my psyche. Right. I'm good with that. And people right. be like, what, girl? This movie fire. Okay, you can have that. That's for you. That's, that's your bag. I'll hold mine. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have scary movies in it. Uh, <laughs> <you know? laughs> My bag is empty of scary movies. I just can't find it. Have no, no, not in there. Uh, and that's just because that's what I decide to do. And I have to, and this is something that really affects your emotional literacy and learning that I think people don't really pay attention to. The music you listen to, the foods you eat, um, the energy as far as the people you have around you because we absorb energy. Um, if every time you walk into the room and somebody in there that you feel some type of way about and your energy is instantly drained, don't walk in that room with that person. You make sure you keep your distance and you <laughs> like for real monitor your people that surround you, monitor it all like all the holes. When I say watch what you eat, it's your mouth, your smells that you smell, like huh? That's what you said. All the holes, all the holes. The the below holes too, okay. From uh, all all yeah. the holes. And I want to let it. That's the real one. Anybody <laughs> into any of your particular holes, okay? Uh, and watch all your holes, okay? Um, because it's it's transferred. It's transferred through the screens. It's transferred through the the ears and the head. I mean, it's transferred. If we can listen to meditation music that alters our brain waves in a way that it makes us happy or can calm us or you know remove negative energy there's so many different waves sound waves for different things you got to know the things you listen to especially in headphones directly going to your brain is going to alter it in some way and you can and when i and we say it all the time we say it all the time you manifest your life it's that gravitational pull what you're putting out or what you constantly replay in your mind becomes your reality so for me and Dion laughs at me all the time my free time is me watching black love comedy if it's not a black rom-com man then i don't know i'm gonna find it Okay, she wants to tell me to watch this movie, y'all. I'm just sorry, I gotta say this. Wait, I'm which one? This movie. <laughs> the one with the um, <laughs> what was that movie called? I couldn't even watch it. I'm like, this is so corny. Which, I can't turn it off. Whatever one with the girl. Yeah. <sighs> what is the movie? <laughs> Look, I'm looking like which one? It may not be my favorite because you got to go back and watch it. If it is, yeah, the, the, it is your favorite one. What is it oh, called? Oh, always the bridesmaid. No, you gotta finish it. See? No, it does. Start, it has its corny points, but the overall is beautiful. You gotta finish it. I don't care. You gotta I, finish it. I was like, I was like, like um, what's y'all tell me what the name of the thing is? But it's where you can virtually watch with someone, and we on the screen together, and we watch it together. Can we do that so you can make it through? Cause you got to finish it because it's moments that are so dope and that's me and you it's our it's our friend it's our friend relationship and all that in the like that thing for like 30 minutes i was like i can't no, you have to finish it y'all watch always a bridesmaid and then tell me how you feel i it gives me all the happy vibes <laughs> i have to tell myself not to watch it i'd be like find a new one that is more out there find a new one it gives me happy vibes y'all watch always a bridesmaid and tell me what you think i'm good on that watch it Happy vibes. Look, so I'm always watching romantic comedy. So y'all don't be mad when my new husband found me and my life be a romantic comedy. Okay. <laughs> and it's okay to for your sanity and your emotional maturity and your emotional literacy and your emotional health and well-being to be like, I don't want to put myself around certain people. That's okay. Whoa, say that again. You don't have to be around certain people if you don't want to be. No way, no way. Be away from those certain people. Come on. Yes. I'm in them ancestors in the room on that one. You don't have, I don't care if they your mama, yes. your daddy, uncle, sister, brother, cousin, best yes. friend. If that person does not serve you and their energy does not serve you, okay, I holler. My whole, everybody around me knows. My One of my favorite songs to quote in that situation, it's a little ratchet. Bear with me, but it ain't nothing to cut that. Chalk, snip, snip. 
snap, snap. I, oh, baby, if you, if your energy is not serving me, I will see you next lifetime. And it's no hard feelings. It's no love loss. I'm going to love you from over here where my sanity is protected. You can remove yourself and move people out of your life that needs to be. And when you start shifting and moving different, they're going to move themselves out the way. Okay? That's the biggest blessing. But you can control who's in your circle just like you can control who on your Facebook, honey. People be like, oh, I can't stand when that person pop up on my timeline. Then, then block them. Unfriend them. It's real. That's your space. Just like this is your space, your energy. Reclaim your space and your energy. I'm like people who don't even get on my nerves. They just, I get on their nerves. So let's make it easy for both of us. No, why am I still here in your presence then? If you don't like me, remove me. I don't have to be in your presence. It's okay. Everybody has to make the choices that's best for them. No hard feelings if we ain't friends no more. No hard feelings. You got to do what's best for you just like I got to do what's best for me. So do not feel bad. That's the note I want to tell y'all. Don't feel bad about removing people from your space if that's what you need to do for your sanity. Okay? Or taking step back. So even right. if it's just a step back, take that step back. Especially if you've tried to work with them and be a part of their lives and have them be a part of yours and it just didn't work. For your own social, social emotional well-being, step away. It's absolutely okay. and it's okay and if they're mad at you then that they're not emotionally literate enough honestly they're not okay enough with their being but that's not your bag whether if they are or they aren't it's not your bag monitor what you are putting in it's okay if you got to step away from some things like i i if y'all know me i'm a film person i'm a tv show person um, so when I do have downtime from working and mommy and all that other stuff, I'm mostly watching shows and things. Sometimes it's because I'm prepping to tell y'all about it um, and do reviews and different things like that. Because that's another thing that a project that I'm working on that I'm going to drop soon. But I recently within the past, I want to say month, I have not watched things that is going to be traumatic to my psyche. Like a lot of the movies that I know I have to watch to do reviews for y'all beautiful people. Um, I'm like, I don't know if I want that. I'm gonna watch me a, a romantic comedy. <laughs> like, um, I'm talking about the Fred Hampton movie. I haven't watched it yet. Um, um, even a, a night in Miami. I know that's not gonna be super traumatic, but I'm like, I don't, I don't, I haven't got enough the strength to watch it yet. Um, I'm really excited about all these movies. I post them on the Melanated America page, movement page, and all of that. Even the one that dropped today, the Billie Holiday versus um, the state or FBI or something like that. America versus Billie Holiday. I love Billie Holiday. Uh, I love what she stood for. I hate what they did to her. I know the story. I'm excited to see the movie, to see the acting and the portrayals and the directing and all of that. But I'm not going to watch it today. I'm going to let y'all know that. I'm, I'm excited. I'm like, oh, it dropped Friday, but I'm not going to watch it today. I don't know when I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch it. But because I'm protecting my space and where I want to be right now, it's certain things that I'm like, I'm not doing it right now. And if that's what you need to do for your sanity, then say, I'm not doing it right now. It, it, sometimes it's, I got to get this done right here. But do you really? If you can get moments of peace, sometimes you got to say, I'm going to do that later. I'm going to send that email later. I'm going to go take me a breath right now. I'm going to go do this right now. Sometimes you got to prioritize your peace. Woo! I'm going to do it for myself. You got to prioritize your peace. And that's a part. And that's okay. And that's a part of social, emotional literacy and health and well-being. And if someone else, and if you can, because another part of that is being able to communicate. So if you're in a partnership, like we were talking about relationships, and, and you need to prioritize your peace in that relationship and your partner can't understand that, then maybe you need to uh, start reevaluating your partnership. If you can address like, hey, today I need to prioritize my peace, babe. Okay? So I need to take this moment to do this or whatever like that. Because you should be able to say that to a person that you're sharing your life with. Yeah. And they should be able to say it to you. And you had a back in that moment because you want to say again that energy, what you pulling in and what you putting out. Cause it's gonna be a day, because if it's a partnership, it's gonna be a day where he or she comes to you like, babe, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need a minute or I'm gonna need today. And and being emotionally mature, you'd be like, All right, take that. 
That ain't got nothing to do with me. You need a space or you need a day or a time. It has nothing to do with me, but it's all about your emotional maturity or your emotional well-being and health. Take your day. I'll be here when you get back. Or let me know what you need me to do. That's emotional maturity going both ways. So all of those things are steps um, and things that you should pay attention to and look to in your life for you to be able to become healthier um, emotionally. D, I got your five. I got your five. Hey, I'm going to drop your uh, notes. So y'all stay tuned to the Instagram page and the Facebook page. I will be dropping her notes for y'all real soon on emotional learning and literacy. Uh, let's recap your five real quick, D. I got your back if you need me. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so first start with the self. Right. Yes. Room with self. Make sure you have a nice routine for that and how you want to function. Then go ahead and make sure not to take anything personal. Um, mm -hmm. That everybody is on their own journeys, and therefore, the best thing you can do is really check in with yourself and make sure you don't take it personal. Teach um, any skills you've learned about social emotional learning. Um, what, whether you're sharing it with students, uh, with your children, with people around you in your circle, just make sure that, that evolutionary process is continuing to happen. Um, I'm drawing a blank on the last two right now. Um, the next one is uh, find out what's yours to carry and what's not. Mm -hmm. That's not my bag. What's in your bag? And being okay with what's in your bag and being okay with what's not in your bag and adjusting accordingly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then the next one is research. Uh, yes, please research. Make sure you know, like, what are emotions? Because the better, the more time you spend, and, and again, we're talking about what are emotions? And in addition to that, what are some of the favorite things that you like to do? And how does that affect your emotions? You know, if I sit on the t when I I'm talking about personal experience, when I sit and watch TV all day, I don't feel very good afterwards. Not all day. I can watch TV for an hour here or there, maybe. But for the entire day, I don't feel all that great emotionally. And I imagine that might have something to do with watching TV all day, because when I don't watch TV all day, I don't feel that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so knowing your triggers. Knowing your triggers. Be aware and research. What are the, how are the things that you do every day affecting your emotions and your ability to be aware of your emotions? Um, and then what are you consuming? How does that affect your emotions? What are you eating? Who are you spending time with? What shows are you watching? What activities do you do? What food, you know, I already said, what are you eating? But like, what is it that you are inputting into your body and into your spiritual self? Or around your body. Or around you or around your spiritual self. What are you doing? What are you surrounding yourself with? Make sure those things are going to help your emotional and spiritual self, your social emotional learning. Absolutely. And those are the five. Thank you so much, Dion. This is yeah. a great show. So Can I share about all the fire? Oh, girl, go ahead. That's how we close it out. <laughs> Do your talent, son. I'm so excited. I actually have a song, a uh, beat. Hold on. Oh, go crazy. <laughs> Let me see if it works properly. I think this is the right. No, I think this is the right one. That was not the right one. Here we go. Can you hear me? Mm hmm. Can you hear the beat as well? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, this is just a little, it, it's a poem that got turned into a song. And people like it, so I like sharing it. How could I clip my wings and try to stay grounded? Even though God and my ancestors got me surrounded. How could I not set free the cage bird that loves to sing? When I'm a blessed with love and family and talent and everything. Everything needed to make me a better person. It's deep inside me, so evolving is my purpose. Consider the truth as I take time to speak to you about the good times and bad times that I've been through. I've hated myself so much I wanted to die. 
Little did I know I was born to fly. Making plans on how I was gonna exit the earth. God had to show up in life and express my worth. I hurt so bad, I just wanted to stop hurting. But God kept me here so I could keep on learning about how valued I am and why I keep on going. Every day is another chance to keep on growing. I was afraid to share with everyone everything I am. Because when I knew they gave me business to for them. But now I see the love God is destined for me. The clarity, the guidance I'm aligned with destiny. Was born with a snowstorm. In 1987, it was so many obstacles that I could have gone to heaven, but God thought it important that I remain present, so I should live my life so I can feel His presence. I can't deny it, I'm a freaking flyer, cause God has a plan for me. That's why my journey is constantly bringing me closer to the soul. Indeed, I've got to rid myself of burdens that be holding me down. Just off my shoulders, stand straight and fix my crown. Today is another chance to express my higher self. No need to continue hiding on moving with self. This time to fly some writing. Be sure to be on it because change is coming quickly and I've got to hone it. My purpose is clear. Nigga, it's not in what I am. My energy is bigger and deeper than any man. I'm part of a master plan. You didn't even know it. Maybe I did, and I was too afraid to show it. But here we are. God gave me the eyes to see. <laughs> no ways to be free. To be me. <laughs> just to come. The woman I'm becoming is the woman I've begun my life as now I get to be her free of fear and ready for change to occur. <laughs> oh I tried. I got like oh. oh you didn't try, you succeeded. Go crazy. Girl, all of a sudden it was like salivation. I was like <laughs> trying to spit in and, and talk at the same time. It was awful. <laughs> no, you went crazy. So it wasn't perfect, but it was what you needed to do today. That's and I hope yeah. it benefited you emotionally. How you feeling? Sue? You know, honestly, being able to share that part of myself has really been liberating. And it allows me to be a self that I haven't been in a long time. Like really free of the fear of what other people think about me um, and what I even think about myself. You know, we limit ourselves so much. Come on, come on. Doing that, you know, making that poem. That beat was made however many years ago by a DJ friend, but you would think that beat was made for the song because the part, I can't. But I switched my life to walk a few is but then the beat drops and start kicking up and doing things. I didn't plan that. <laughs> it just did. I was like, I, I did the poem and I was playing it out. And I asked him if I could use his beat. And he said, yeah. And I was like, okay. And I played a few of them. And I got to this one. And I was like, it's perfect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like it was made for the poem. Fire. <laughs> Yo, you said something that I want to um cause just because this happened today, and you were saying how we put limitations on ourselves. And so I went in my mother's room today and everybody was gone, house was empty. Um, and it, but her Bible was open on her bed. So I sat down and I was like, I'm gonna look at a passage, and whatever this passage is, is gonna be a word, right? So I was like, let me just look. Mm, mm, right. And I just looked at the Bible and it was a word. OK, so let me <laughs> let me uh, read to you this passage and how it breaks down to what you just said. Right. And how it relates to social, emotional literacy and learning. OK, mm. Moses said to the Lord. Oh, Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, who gives man his mouth? Who makes him deaf or mute? Who gives him sight or makes him blind? It, is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and I will teach you what to say. Let me break that down for y'all. Now, I don't subscribe to the Bible. That's not my thing. But I find truth in whatever I find truth in. It could be the Quran. It could be whatever it is. All right. That was the word. Let me tell you why that was the word. Because we doubt ourselves. That purpose 
that was put in you, that idea that was put in you, that song, that poem, that message, that whatever was put in you, we go, no, I can't do that. If you couldn't do it, it wouldn't have been put in you. If you couldn't, if you can't do it, it wouldn't have been your idea. It was given to you. All you got to do is do what you can do. And God got the rest or the creator got the rest or the universe got the rest. However you want to look at it or whoever it is for you. But if it was given to you to do, do that thing. Stop doubting yourself. Um, know that I always say the universe moves and shifts in your favor. The question is if you're moving with it or not. So if that story, that idea, that message, that project, that business was put in your heart, it was meant for you to do that. You need to do it. Uh, Dion always uh, says, like, I have everything that I need or something like that. What you say, D? I am I'm provided everything I need. All I need to do is ask. Or ask you have, to be provided for or something like that. You have everything you need already. And your God, your creator, your universe is like, bruh, I got you. Just do what you can do. Just do what I told you to do. That message that came down through the ethers, and he was like, heck, that's fire. Uh, I can't do it though. Stop doubting you. If it was sent to you, do it. And God or creator or universe or ancestors, whoever again, whoever it is for you, they got you the rest of the way. There's nothing you can't do. We are unlimited. And it goes back to that gravitational pool that we talked about earlier. What you put out is what you get. What you tell yourself is what it will be. You manifest your life. So don't say you can't because you can. And God or universe or whomever got you the rest of the way. Okay. That was a word that hit me today. Um, and I looked at that and I was like, mm. and it was for me. It was for me, actually. I'm sharing it with you because it's probably for you, too. But it was for me. And I was like, I'm just going to randomly look at this Bible and whatever I pass, whatever passage I look at was going to speak to me. And that's actually something that I've currently been struggling with myself. And so I believe my creator of universe and my ancestors sent that passage directly for me. But it was for you, too, because I shared it with you today. And so thank you for saying that piece that made me think about that. Um, D. So I hope y'all y'all get that. I hope y'all vibe with that and rock with that as well. It's been a great show, man. Yeah, girl. It's been a great show. It's always good when I'm kicking it with D. Come on now. You know we have a party every time. We the party star. It's a turn up every time we link up. You feel mm -hmm. me? And Katie just add extra spice to the show. <laughs> I'm here. Absolutely. So, yes, y'all, get, get in tune with your uh your natal charts and astrology. Get in tune with your emotions. Get in tune with what you put in your body, all the holes, okay? Uh, and make sure that you are protecting your peace. Choose your peace. Choose your sanity. And I'm going to drop Dion's note for y'all. And y'all go ahead and watch this again. Rewind and get them gems she dropped earlier because Sus was dropping hot fire. And I wasn't just talking about them bars at the end, okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. Make sure y'all stay closely attached to the facebook page and the instagram page as every single week every single day monday through friday we drop us some hot fire for y'all if it's not the breeze hmm. experience tuesday then it's free your mind friday both at 6 p.m and all the other days of the week we are dropping little tidbits each week is a different topic each day is a different theme Make sure y'all get that work. We love you. This will be posted to our YouTube. Go like the YouTube as well as our Facebook page. And if y'all missed the Breathe Experience Tuesday or y'all not on our social media pages just yet, understand that on Tuesday, we dropped some hot fire for y'all. We dropped the Sip Prob Challenge. Hold on, let me get the... The Sip Prob Challenge was dropped to everybody. Everybody, go check out the post on our social media page. The Sip Prob Challenge is open to everyone. The rules of how to participate is on there. You will get some prizes. The winners, there'll be two winners. Y'all already know. It's going to be hilarious. It's a video entry submission. So get up there. Get your ideas together. It's your time to shine. Let us see what you got. Okay? Check out the Sip Prob post. Yeah. And we can't wait to see y'all submissions. And until then, over there, huh? I said, Katie, trying to tell y'all, get over there, get over there. Tell them, sit prom challenge, get in there. 
with the Healing Academy and Melanated America. So, y'all, it's been amazing. We'll see you next Friday for Free Your Mind Friday, if not Tuesday for Breathe Experience Tuesday, if not on the individual posts that you check in on Instagram and Facebook. Right, Katie? Right, Mama? Yes. 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 All right, y'all. <laughs> Well, holla, y'all be blessed. We'll see y'all next week. Have an amazing, amazing day. Hey. See ya.